Okay. <clears throat> Just make sure that this is working the way that it's supposed to. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. Yay, we have audio. Yay, we have audio. Okay, so now that we got that down, let's go ahead and share this out really quick. I know it's kind of late, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, it's been a late night already. All right, so let's get this out of the way and this out of the way. <clears throat> All right, so um, yeah, Voxel Lab uh, actually reached out to us to take a look at their new flagship printer. Uh, this one is the Proxima, or Proxima, however you want to call it. Uh, this is their monochrome screen. They do have two versions. They have a regular screened one that's a 5.5 inch. And then they have this one that's the 6.01 inch uh, screen that is a monochrome screen. So this is their new big bad boy. Uh, one thing I will say is that this is actually produced and made by uh, Flash Forge. So for those of you who are in the 3D printing community and have not heard of Voxel Lab, uh, most likely you've heard of FlashForge. Uh, they make a slew of 3D printers that, uh, as far as I know, are, are pretty good. They're, they're good workhorses. So um, along with their printer, they also sent us two of their uh, specific resins. And I'm pretty sure these are made by them because I don't, I don't see any type of like copying from another company, which I usually do. So... But they sent us a gray and they sent us a white. Uh, both of them say made in China. Um, and uh, yeah, it just basically says shake evenly before use, avoid lighting, which I got to worry about that. What not. So without further ado, let's get this unboxed and take a look at it. All right. Yeah, that's another resin printer. Actually, that's that's two resin printers. The Sonic Mini 4K, which we got to do our review on, and the uh, Spark Maker FHD, which is kind of a cool thing. All right, so let's see what we got in the box. Got some foam. Uh, quick start guide, basically a thank you for purchasing Voxel. Voxel Lab 3D printer. We have a seven by 24 hour after sales. Uh, so I pretty much think that they mean a 24 um, seven sales. And uh, this is their email. Got a couple strainers here that look, eh, they look okay. They're not the greatest. And a USB stick and then our quick start guide. So we'll put that off to the side for right now. Uh, we have a bag with a couple screws and three different size uh, Allen keys. 
hope we don't have to assemble anything. We have a nice beefy, uh, we got two. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. We'll, we'll unbox everything once we, uh, once we get it all set up. Looks like just your standard one. A power cable. I do not see, oh, there's a power brick. Okay, power cable, some extra gloves. I pulled some gloves out just in case we need them. And then our power brick, which looks very, very similar to um, the one that the Mars has. And we'll get to that in a second. All right, let's pull this top off. And there's our printer. And we pull it out in one piece. That's the million dollar question. Now it looks like it because it's got a nice little handle here. Obviously we wanna make sure that we grab a hold of this. Okay, that's it. Nothing else in the box. Some pretty nice packaging. Uh, I do like the little handle design. That, that makes it a lot better for a lot of things. I hope you guys can comment. I don't see any comments coming through, but I'm not sure if you guys are just not commenting or keeping an eye on things or what's going on. And voila. There she is. Not too heavy. Say it's a good in between size. Now, if you guys are wondering right off the bat, this does look just like a uh, an Elegoo Mars, which I'll be honest, I think that they pulled the um, excuse me, I'm hip hiccuping. Um, I think they decided to go with um Calent. If you guys do or do not know, Calent makes the any uh not the any cubic the Elegoo uh series printers, uh meaning the Mars and the Saturn. Uh as of right now. They contract through them, make the design and everything like that, but for the most part the printer is from Calent. This being the same type of thing, I believe this is contracted out through Calent, made for Flash Forge. It does have some different uh, variations to the Mars, but as you can clearly see, it looks pretty similar. So we'll, we'll get more into that once we, uh, once we unbox it and everything, but uh, let's try and add to the tape here. But so far, it's, uh, it's boxed very, very nicely. I like that they put this tape around here to make sure that the... Uh, the hood doesn't swing around during shipping. That is a very, very nice thing to have. Let's try and lift this up as best as we can. So, all right, there's that. Out to the side for right now. Looks like we have some more tape over here. Went a little tape crazy. It's not, not a bad thing, but hey. I like the look of this already. This is that's nice and solid. Anyway, pull that off. There's our build plate. Oh, hey, look. The build plate looks very familiar. It's kind of like a cross between an any cubic and uh, an Elegoo Mars base. I'm not a big fan of these uh, tippy style uh, leveling systems, but hey. It's a little bright. Yes, uh, that's absolutely my fault, and I can't really do too much about it. I mean, I can turn off my light, but then we lose all light. So, give or take. No light, light. Let me know. Um, but, yeah, my uh, my light is quite bright. Uh, it's, it's so bright, if I were to use a clear resin on this printer and I don't have the top on it to block the UV rays, this light will actually cure it. So that's how heavy duty this light is. All right, so that's pretty much it. Just a big piece of foam hiding the build plate and the, uh, that's really it. I don't think there's anything else, no. Nope. All right. Okay. 
So yeah, as I said, you know, it looks very, very similar to an Elegu Mars, uh, both in terms of the build itself and this uh, this little swivel um, adjuster. But uh, yeah, it looks like they kind of went different ways with this. So I don't know. Maybe it is a kind of a newer one. We'll have to see. It's a very interesting uh, build plate already. All right, so we have our vat here. We're just gonna untighten this. So it looks like this slides in. That's kind of interesting how that slides in. Uh, so we have a taped off area for the LCD screen. And it looks like this has definitely been scraped up pretty terribly. Um, what I mean by scraped up is it's not, I don't think it's going to cause an issue, but it's just, it looks terrible. It doesn't look very good. It looks like somebody like sanded this down and they didn't end up polishing it or repolishing it. So first off, um, this is the monochrome screen. And one of the big things that people always ask is, is there a protector on the monochrome screen? Uh, I know the Elegoo Saturn, uh, the Elegoo Mars, uh, Pro and Pro 2, and um, I think the Sonic Mini, no, the Sonic Mini does not. Um, the Anycubic Mono X, and I'm not sure about the any, the other Anycubic models that are monochrome, um, but they don't have actual protectors on the screen. It's just kind of like a raw screen, and you can tell the difference because it's not very reflective. It's kind of like looking at an old LCD TV and then looking at your phone. So, like, the difference is, is one's glossy, one's kind of like a matte finish. No pun intended. Um, but this one looks like it does have a uh, glass protector on it. So that's very, very nice to see. Uh, I'm tempted to take off the tape sometime down the line just to see what's inside here. Because these screens are going to be the ones that people are looking for. So, um, but yeah, for the most part... It's a pretty standard build for a printer. Um, there are some machining marks on here that you can see. Uh, so it's not the prettiest looking thing, but I, I kind of like the finish that they have here. It's almost like a, uh, a textured finish. So if any of you guys do regular 3D printing, um, you may have heard of PEI sheets or flexible build sheets. If you guys have seen Prusa and things like that. They have a textured PEI sheet, and it that's exactly what it looks like, a textured. So the entire base here is kind of textured. So it's got a really, really nice look to it. I, I kind of dig it. This, okay, that's what I was worried about. I, I was worried that this was plastic, and that was like, I was going to say no to that. But it is metal, so that's kind of good. This is all metal. That's metal. It's got a nice, nice chunk of uh, uh, linear rail on that. So um, pretty good standard LCD screen size. Uh, I believe it's 3.5 inch. Our USB port is on the side here. On the back, it looks like we have a fan, power switch, power input. Uh, one thing I do notice right off the bat is there is no active uh, filtering on this unit. So if you are looking to get something super budget, then, you know, this might be okay, but if you're worried about having the fumes filtered, you might want to look into something a little different um, or go out and buy just a filter system. Like I have a filter system for all my resin printers, so it doesn't matter if I have one or not. It's not the end of the world, but, you know, if you have it printing right next to you, like I usually do with a newer model, that's what goes on with it. So... All right, so we removed the vat, and it looks like, that's kind of strange, but sure. I think this is an extra FET film, which I'm not, I guess it's got a protector on it, so it's not the end of the world, but it is pre-drilled and everything, so that's kind of cool. Um, just kind of weird how they have it set underneath there. I, I guess that's okay. It's not the end of the world. It just looks kind of wonky. Because the issue is I have animals and I have hair all over me all the time. And yeah, because they shed. They're animals. 
So I have that issue. Uh, looks like they provided, that's definitely not a fat film. So that's really weird. Guessing this is the protector. Okay. Let's look at the starting guide, shall we? Let's see if it's got any information about that, because that's just, that's kind of strange to me. I'm guessing. All right. So in the package here, we have an after sale service. You basically um, fill this out. Um, so it looks like they've been around since 2017. So it's already been, what, three years, four years almost? So parts excluded from warranty or resin vat, that film. Platform, light shield, the USB stick, resin, scraper, metal scraper, display screen, vinyl gloves, filter, and screw. Okay. All right. Anyway, let's look inside here. This is probably just a basic setup, like, hey, do this, do that. Leveling the build plate. Yeah, I'm not too, too keen about this... Uh, Bill plate. Uh, you know, we're going to have to get a piece of paper to level this. Doesn't say anything about the fat, fat film. So it doesn't say that it comes with extra fat film, but you know, you guys see this. This is definitely extra fat film and it's got a protector on it. So we're just going to leave it to be. And hopefully that's the case. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. But you never know. Uh, it does have some sheet to box software settings and things like that. Okay. So, yeah, for the most part, check, check, check. Sounds good. Um, we do have a max fill line, which is really, really cool. Uh, it looks a little low, but the reason for that is because, as you guys can see, these are one of these unique vats where it has a upper and lower chamber. So you have a lower chamber that fits most of the resin and then it fills up and there's a lip right here. You guys can just see that in the, uh, the screen. And then there's your max fill line. This is always nice to have. Unfortunately, I don't think it's engraved. Yeah, so that might come off if you use IPA or denatured alcohol, which is what I use um, to clean this. All right, so we're gonna put that in there very gently and we're gonna screw it down. All right, so now let's get this all set up here. Let's, we have our power cord. My nose is like running today. I don't know what's going on. Coronavirus, no. Blue light, the blue light special. And for the moment of truth. Yay, it works. So uh, sounds going off. That's always the first thing. We're going to do probably service, I think it is. No, it's information. There we go. I always don't like the sounds. Um, just cause I'm usually printing quite a lot. All right. So we're going to turn off the light here and we're going to check the vat and make sure that everything is good. Actually, we're, we're going to remove the vat really quick. And we're going to do a test just to make sure. So we're going to go to tools and we're going to go to exposure setting. And you guys are going to see the exposure. Can I press it? Oh no. Okay, so we have a square exposure. I do hear a fan running. 15 seconds. Okay. Hello, uh, Mika. All right, so that's working. Uh, let's try residue. Turn this off and go. So residue is, is that clean. So there's our full screen. Sorry for the super bright light. But uh, yeah, it looks good. We don't have any 
anything set on there. You know how I said it was kind of like scratched up really bad. Um, that's just more or less a cosmetic thing. It's not, as you can see, it's not going to have an issue with the, um, with the print itself. So that's good. Uh, I am kind of digging this, this vat design though. Um, I mean, it does kind of have a downfall with where, how you put it on there, but it's not terrible, but, uh, all in all, I like the, uh, I like the look of this. It's very, very nice. Actually, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm doing everything backwards for you guys, apparently. So, since we don't have some paper, we're just going to utilize the uh, after-sale service warranty and go from there. So, we're going to go ahead and bring this up. It's kind of loud. It seems seems more or less vibrating through the entire unit. So we do have a padded mat here. So, so you guys heard it in that. Let's do the padded mat and see if it helps out. Nah, not really. More or less because of the the cheap exterior. That's why um, it vibrates. So maybe if we like padded the screws or something like that, we can we can get this all set up. But all right. So usually I give the manufacturer the benefit of the doubt that this is already pre-leveled and ready to go, but I've been proven wrong lately that, you know, not all uh, manufacturers do that. So let's just read and see if it does say that. And if it does say that it's pre-leveled, we're just going to go ahead and hit print and see what we got on the USB stick. So let's see here. Um, tighten build plate, just loosen all screws, so it doesn't say anything about that. Um, each 3D printer has passed the test before leaving. It is normal for, there's residue material and the extruder or slight scratch on the printing platform does not affect the use. So they do give you a warning that, hey, this is just normal. So, uh, place requirements. So this one, for people who are interested in resin printing, this actually kind of gives you a breakdown of, you know, is this good for you and your environments and everything? So that's kind of nice. Not too many manufacturers have that. So that's that's really, really nice. And as I said, this is made by Flashforge. Hey, there you go. There's Flashforge right there. So again, I believe Calent actually makes this uh, for Flash Flashforge. But I, I don't really know that for certain. I'm just going off basing the look of the model, comparing it to an Elegoo Mars. So, um, yeah, it basically gives you all the cautions and everything like that. How to use your resin, resin storage, um, where you should have this. Uh, distance, distance from the space should be at least 35 centimeters. I'll be honest, this is definitely not 35 centimeters, but it's not like we're going to keep a printer here for a long period of time. And again, not even, you know, three feet away from me, no, not even two feet away from me, is my big tower unit that's, um, that has air filtration in it. So. so it looks like those screws and everything are just kind of extra screws in case anything happens. So that's kind of good. Um uh, if twitch a piece of A4 paper, feel a large resistance. So, in a way, they kind of got that um, that right. So, all right. So, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what was in the little bags here. So, we do have a interesting little scraper. This one's kind of got, like, some nubs on it on the one side. It has Flash Forge engraved in it. And it's just kind of like a nice scraper. This is this might actually be very good. Oh my god! And it's actually a beveled edge scraper. This is great for printers. Not too many printers come with that. They're usually straight edged, so they look like this, not like this. This allows you to get underneath the print and take it off. I probably still won't use it, but it's nice to see that. 
uh, especially with a budget printer like this. Um, I, I forget exactly how much this thing was, but I want to say it was just over $200 on Amazon right now. So if you're looking for a super budget resin printer that, you know, is kind of nice. Yeah, it is a little bit on the loud side, but I mean, you get what you pay for it, in all honesty. Um, you know, that's, that's a pretty good price for this printer so far with the way that it looks. I, I genuinely like the look of this printer so far. So we're going to go ahead and loosen this build plate. Ooh, that's on there. I don't know. You guys choose. Should I just go for it or should I level? Let me know in the comments. Because that's pretty tight. I think that's already pre-leveled. But we'll let you guys choose. How about that? Take it to one millimeter and have a look. How about, how about we home it, put a piece of paper underneath it, and we'll we'll see what the clearance is. How about that? We'll just we'll test the clearance. We'll go manual, we'll put it home. We'll just test it out. Hopefully I don't crash, crash the screen. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be the best unboxing video ever. So, man, how was the unboxing video? Oh, it went great until I crashed into the screen. So, it is not 100% leveled, I can tell you that. But, it's in there. It's on there. But I can tell that there's some movement, and I'm not sure why. I don't think it's that. But it's it's good. I think it's good. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> okay. So we're 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 good. We're gonna go. We're gonna go for it. Like I said, the, the last couple times I've been I missed it. Now I will say that this is already triggering me, even though it is That right there, kind of, I have an issue with. You really have to tighten this thing down, which I'm not too, too keen about. All right, where's our USB stick? So our USB stick is kind of a fancier looking one. Typical silver little thing. Let's see what this is. This is an eight gig. Uh, these usually die pretty quick, so I always have these uh, these SanDisk cruisers laying around. Um, those are probably your best bang for your buck uh, when it comes to uh, resin printers or anything that you're using, USB-wise, uh, in my opinion. Uh, if I can learn how to put this in. All right. So... Uh, next thing, let's uh, let's have a choice. Do we do gray or do we do white? You guys choose. Let me know. I'm going to guess gray. But I've been wrong before. So it only comes with one filter. But hey, I agree. Uh, white is kind of hard to do. So, all right. So we have a tie right now. Uh, Salvatore is still here. If you are, let me know. We got a tie, gray and white. I think I'm, I might go a little bit more for the gray, but we shall see. Anybody else there? Anybody else want to comment? Gray or white? Where is the end of this? So I'm very 
very interesting way to wrap this, I will say. I mean, it's wrapped good. It's just, it's weird. So it is a little different than the Mars hood. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of got like a uh, beveled front here and then a straight cut. So it does have a nicer look to it, at least. Um, all right, we're going to just go with gray because uh, I do kind of agree with five minute vids that uh, gray does kind of come out a little bit better. Yeah, I, I like that profile a lot. It's It's interesting. Uh, it's one of the things that, you know, you don't see too many printers. They just kind of, they kind of go with the flow of what's out there and just, here you go. Um, but yeah, that, that's one of the reasons why I kind of like the uh, Creality LDR and the LDH is they, they kind of have these squared off, rounded tapered edges, whatever you want to call them. I don't know. Not that smart. Um, but yeah, they have them on all four corners to make it kind of stand out instead of having, you know, a round one or just a square one. So, all right. We're going to go with gray. And again, this is their resin that they sent. So we have a protector and then a protector. So we're going to have to Now, again, like I said, usually you can tell who makes their resins by uh, just looking at it, but because um, usually the bottles give it away. So as you guys may or may not know, eSun, eSun makes the majority of resin on the market um, that are in metal bottles. Um, any cubic and Elegoo Mars are made by the same, or I'm sorry, Elegoo Mars. Elegoo and any cubic resins are made by the same company, the same with Epax. Um, I'm not exactly sure who makes them, but yeah, they, they're it's the same type of company. I didn't even see what we had on the, uh, the SD card or the USB drive. All right, so we filled that to the max line. Uh, it seems about half the bottle, so let's let's just call it 250. It's not too bad. Um, that's I'd say one of the biggest downfalls of these smaller printers is nobody can really build a small printer to have a vat that fits the resin. Um, and what I mean by that is like I can print something on here that can take 600 milliliters of resin. And obviously, this only holds 250 on the Mac. So it's one of the downfalls of it. So let's see here. We're going to go into print. And let's see what we got here. So we have a nozzle STL. Hmm. Hopefully, they got some, some, slice, some slice models in here. I don't think they have any test models. Well, that's unfortunate. Why would you not do that? Or does this print STLs? Okay, so it looks like we got to slice this. So now we get to go and work on our little computer here. Which is interesting because I don't know what the file output of this thing is going to be. So we need to find that out. Let's see what this uses. This should use a sheet two board. So it's probably CTB. Choose the file type as .fdg. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, alrighty. That's kind of a downfall. Um, because, well... They're not pre-sliced on here, and to get 
a file, work on this, we have to probably play with G2Box, which is no bueno because I don't think G2Box outputs that file type. So this video might be shorter than I'd like it to be. Let's see, install and open the G2Box. We're not going to, we already did. All right, so, you know, we're just gonna do a test print. Um, open this up with G2Box and see what this nozzle is. I wish I can have this. Oh, you know what, this is, oh. All right, so right here, this is fantastic. So I, I wish you guys can see this. I wish I would have set this up on, on my OBS, but on this printer is a nozzle runoff. Now, what I mean is it's an attachment for the VAT. Yeah, so it's a corner attachment for the VAT. So you can run off the resin down one side of it because there's no, there's no true corner. I mean, I guess you can use that, but this is kind of like an extended one from what it looks like. So that's awesome. It's the first printer that I know that actually has a useful print off of it. Now, obviously, they do have their Voxel Lab Deer print, which kind of looks cool. This is their standard print. Um, it's the Vor Vorexel. I think that's how you say it. Basically, it's got a bunch of holes in it. So... Um, yeah, I, I wish you guys can see what I'm doing because it's just kind of like, this is a great stream. I'm just watching him look at whatever. Like, no, that's no way. All right, let's see if we have the machine on here. I don't remember seeing a Voxel Lab on here. Let's see if maybe, oh, oh my God, Voxel Lab is on here. I didn't even realize that. Okay, so we already got the Voxel Lab set up. Um... So just for a quick rundown, in Sheet2Box, we have our sizing as 82.62. So let's just call it 82.5, okay? Or if you want to round down, just call it 82 by 82 by 130 by 155. We're just going to call it at that. So it's pretty similar to most of the monochrome screen build plates. So not too bad. Um, let's see, we have we have profiles set up already. Let's go for standard gray. Okay. And yeah, we're uh, we're gonna go ahead. We'll print the deer. Or or should we print? Okay. So here, I'll give you guys the ability to interact here. Okay. I have I have a drip print that came on this. I have the deer print. Or should we just do a, a minor test print to test out the resin? Which that's not very exciting or anything. Obviously, we, we're not going to be able to get all of the, uh, the printing in this video, but I can at least start it and sit here and chit chat for, you know, 10 extra minutes and show you guys the prints, how it's going. So, yeah, let me know what you guys want. Uh, if it's the deer or the drip pan. Because either one. And again, I really wish that I can show you that, but unfortunately my camera is stationary. And if I move it, uh, you guys will go bye-bye. <laughs> it's very, very finicky. All right. So let's see. Um, you know what? We're going to show off the test print. How about that? We're going to do that. We're going to do the deer because the deer has the most profiling look on it. Um, it has lettering in Voxel Lab. It has a base. It has no supports. And it should print as is. And it looks pretty detailed on here. Whether or not that's going to come out the way that it should, 
we shall see. But, oop, that's not what I wanted. Okay. So, yeah, that, that's about the only downfall right now is that they don't have pre-sliced files. You actually have to slice it yourself. Which, I guess, in turn, is kind of a good idea because it allows the user to set up the printing profile for it and then print away. So let's see what our count is. So it says bottom layer count six. And bottom exposure, I'm sorry, exposure time is 2.5 and bottom exposure is 20 with a layer count of six. And this is at 0.5. 0 0.05 uh, layer height. So let's see how long this is going to take. Uh, so it says three hours and 21 minutes. So not too bad of a print, obviously, because it's a um, monochrome screen. It's going to be much, much faster. But if this is the case, because right now, this is the cheapest monochrome screen printer on the market that I'm aware of. Um, like I said, it's it, last time I checked, it was just over $200 on Amazon. Let's, let's check while we're, you know, uh, slicing this. Yeah. So this is actually $209 and there's a 5% coupon coupon um, that you can attach to this. So that means this is literally the cheapest monochrome printer on the market that has a screen protector over it as well. So right now it's kind of checking some good boxes. Uh, again, one of the downsides is it doesn't have pre-sliced files, but again, as I said before, that's not a huge downfall, but for those who just want to go out and print and want to test it out, you know, that's, that's kind of a downfall, but it's good because like I said, it lets you set up the printer and get it right. Okay. So let's go. So sound wise, it is definitely very loud, but again, $209 it's pretty hard to beat. Um, I don't know exactly what board this uses. I would guess a Shitu board, uh, judging by the setup and everything. But the LED array setup screams Nano DLP. But I highly doubt that. Um, and the only reason I say that is, um, it's, uh, the LED to do the test of the LED and the screen, that's a nano DLP test. And the only reason I know that is because I have a nano DLP printer and that's the test. So I think we probably should adjust it a little bit. Um, we're a little too close to the screen. There's not enough. There's not enough profile between the resin and the build plate, so it kind of crashed into it a little. It's not the end of the world, but if we leave it like that, that means that any print that comes off of here will most likely need to come off of a raft or something like that, uh, because we're going to have too squished of a layer. So our elephant foot is going to be insanely huge. Um, now it might affect the entire print as well, but again, I let you guys decide we, we just went on the fly. So, um, but again, I think we're a little too good on the first, uh, first layer there. So let's see here. Um, sorry, I'm talking to some people. Now I do hear it popping already. So we have good adhesion. So that's good. 
So I'm just going to go over some information about this. So uh, like I said, this is the Voxel Lab. Um, it does look very similar to the Elegoo Mars, but it is slightly different. Um, I believe that it's got a similar size to it. So it could be based off of the Kellen printers. Uh, that's what my guess would be, is that they are. Um, let's see, this is a two, this is a 2K uh, monochrome screen. So it's not 4K or anything like that. Um, Anti-slip hexagonal screws. So that's another thing that kind of screams Elegoo on there um, or Kellant because of that setup. Um, yeah, we are getting good adhesion so far and it is printing very fast. So what, what was the layers at? Let's see this. So we have six layers at 20 seconds. So we're already, you know, probably at the first couple layers. Oh, we're at our six layers. So it's going to be two seconds after each and every one after that. Um, so yeah, this is already set up. Both of the printers, the uh, Voxel, Voxel Lab, Proxima, and the other one, which is the Prima, I think it is. Let me try and find that. No, I, don't know. I think I think that's what it is. I think it's the Proxima and the the Prima. Those are the two printers that are out there for Voxel Lab. And again, this is a Flash Forge company, so it's not you know nothing new to them. They do have uh, a resin printer, Flash Forge, but it is much much more expensive than these printers because it is a DLP printer. So, um, but yeah, the, oh, Polaris, that's the other one. So we, we have the Voxel Lab Polaris and the Voxel Lab Proxima, Proxima, or however you want to say it. Um, so yeah, right now, like I said, I'm looking at Amazon right now. The price is currently $209.99 uh, and that is on a sale. Um, and it does have a 5% extra savings coupon applied at checkout. So we're going to go ahead and add this to the cart just to see um, how much it exactly is. Because, you know, with taxes and everything, it does add up. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So let's proceed to checkout. All right, so with everything right now, it's $209.99, and our 3% coupon is $10.50 off. That brings it just under $200. So it's $199.50. Then obviously with taxes, it pretty much brings it to what you're going to see it for, uh, at least in the state of good old state of Illinois here. Um, we're at $211 and some change. So, um, that's with taxes and everything included on that. So, um, so yeah, 200 and let's call it $215 just to be on the safe side because with taxes and everything like that, that's not too bad of a price for a monochrome screen. Um, again, it is a little bit loud, but it's not, it's not like it's a game changer. It's, it's very similar to most of the other printers I have, like a any cubic photon or an Elegoo Mars or uh, a Nova uh, Nova 3D Elfin. Um, what else do I got? GTAC DP200, a Hiya SQ1. It's very similar. It might be just a tad bit louder because of the uh, uh, really cheap um, cover on this, because this is just a light aluminum cover. But if you were to take that off and, you know, either pad it with some stuff, like pad the screws or the areas that they connect, just put some, some very, very light padding on there, I bet you you would quiet this printer down very, very easily. So not too bad um, 
in terms of that. So you're not too worried about the sound or anything because I'm one of those people. As long as it works, I don't care. Um, yeah, I can hear it upstairs when I'm sleeping, but it's not it's not going to be like I'm waking up to it. So um, setup wise, it it's pretty much set up the same way that like an a Lagu Mars would be. Um, and the LED array and screen scream, um, you know, the original Elegoo Mars. So if you guys do or do not know, the Mars Pro and the Mars Pro 2 moved away from the old school LED where it was just like a single or two LEDs that were uh, shot up through a, a tunnel, so to speak. And um, they moved away from that and... They did the bubble LEDs, and they did a um, uh, what is it called? It's like they even the, it basically they went from multi bubble to a single bubble on the Mars Pro uh, to the Mars Pro Two, and the light that would be distributed wasn't very even. So on this, you actually saw it was very even. Now we didn't do a true even test with it, so. Um, what's the behind you? What are you assembling? Oh, so these actually have been printers that I actually have to uh, put back on my table because I had to use my table for something. So this one is the Sobel SV01. It's an amazing printer. Best bang for your buck, in my opinion. And then right behind that is the Mingda D3 Pro, which is a really nice big printer as well. Uh, pretty much another good bang for your buck. Uh, and then, you know, obviously my tons of resin printers here, tons of resin printers here. And then all these boxes are actually printers as well that we have to do reviews on as well. Uh, so some of the upcoming videos that we will be doing unboxing and reviews on are the following. We have a um, ANET ET4 and ANET ET5, uh, Sane Smart Corception. Um, what else? These, um, a toy DIY four in one. So it's basically like a snap maker. Um, it's, it has a laser engraver, CNC and the FDM printing. Um, then we also have the Sonic Mighty 4K, which we will be doing. Um, we'll be doing an unboxing tomorrow morning. So in a couple hours, actually like eight or eight hours or so. Um, so I got to unbox that and I also have their cure station, uh, the Luna. So we'll be taking a look at that. Um, I'll be getting up my review video on the Sonic mini 4k, which we have right here. That's been kind of printing away. Um, we just did a review video on our spark maker FHD. That one's kind of cool. Um, not really practical can, you know, considering that the price that you pay for that is more expensive than this thing is. Uh, right now, but it's kind of cool because it's really, really small and compact. I mean, you guys know how small the Sonic Mini 4K is, and that's how small this thing is. Like, that's really, really small printer. So it's really cool to have for, like, small parts and small areas and things like that. So um, I know I'm forgetting some other printers and stuff like that that are over there, but, uh, yeah, for, for the most part, we, we do have our hands full. <laughs> so... Um, I'm just going to let this play for another, you know, 10 minutes or so. Then we'll, ch we'll check it out. Maybe we'll go let it roll to like 15% if we can. And uh, that way we can take a look and see how the Prince is actually doing. But yeah, so far, initial impressions are, it's kind of a nice printer. It is a little bit on the loud side. Um, and it does you know, give me those Elegoo Mars vibe um, off of it or the Calent Orbit, which is the originator of those model printers. Um, this one might actually be more close to like an AnyCubic Photon because of the way that this is all opened uh, a lot wider than the uh, Elegoo Mars is. But it does, it does scream Elegoo Mars a lot to me because they do have a similar color combination of the orange and the silver so um but yeah i mean for the most part it's a really really nice printer it does have a uh 
Oh, I'm probably going to forget what that name is. It has a, I call them leaf springs, but they're not really that because it's not really a leaf spring. It's got a spring underneath the, um, the bottom of the holder, so to speak. And that keeps it from dropping at any way, shape, or form or moving around. So uh, that's something interesting to see there because you usually don't see that on a budget printer. Um, usually you see that like on my printers, like my Weebox, you know, like those, those the higher end printers um, usually you have to add those onto it. Um, but basically it's a compression spring to keep it, keep the Z from being straight not the Z, but the, the, the guide for the Z, it keeps it on there and keeps it from dropping down basically. So that's nice to see that. Um, and looking at this, that Z looks pretty straight to me. Yeah, it, it's not, it's not wobbling at all. So most of these printers that you see, they do have a little bit of wobble. It's not the end of the world until you get you know, to the top. Um, but with the linear rail guide, it usually stabilizes that. The Z is just usually there to make it go up and down. So it's not a huge issue unless you have a lot of um, speed going on and you're going up and down. So, um, but yeah, I, I kind of like this printer. I was a little worried about it because, you know, it is a budget printer and it is a monochrome screen. So I was like, a monochrome screen under $250. That's kind of weird to hear. Um, but so far, that looks kind of cool. And as I'm actually looking at this, this hood goes down on an angle. So it kind of has like a, not necessarily a purpose, but it it's, it's not just made. It's made to look nice too. So I kind of dig that they, they went a little bit extra further and you know, did that type of stuff. So that's, that's really, really nice. Um, all metal constructions, more or less, uh, you know, you got your cheap aluminum cover that's standard for most printers. Um, but I mean, again, for the, uh, for a budget printer, I'd say this is, this is probably going to be your best bang for your buck in terms of a budget printer. Uh, if you're looking to get into fast resin printing, because like I said, monochrome screens, they usually start at 250. And I, that's that's the Mars Pro 2, the Mars Pro, uh, or I'm sorry, the Mars Pro 2 and that uh, Creality LDH or LD-002H. Um, those usually start at 250 and go up from there. So uh, it's nice to see a, a budget printer um, out there that uh, is just as user-friendly. So um but yeah that's that's really all i got about it um there's not really too much else i can say about this machine it's it's pretty self-explanatory um like i said some of the weird points is that they don't have any pre-sliced files which for me personally i'm fine with that because i usually end up just taking a printer doing a test print and i don't use those test prints so they're just kind of there just to show off for you guys um but that's that's cool because if I were to not do this stuff on a live stream and show it off, I'd probably just throw a test print on there to see, you know, what the best printing um, specifications are for this because there's nothing on here that I can see that tells me, hey, you need to print this at this exposure setting. So, and that's one of the reasons why I did the expo resin exposure settings video, because that's something that a lot of people miss. They think they can just hit a profile and be on their merry way. Uh, and that's not the case. Uh, case in point, um, I had a friend who bought an LDH and he used a profile for an LDR. Needless to say, his print did not print. Uh, had some... Uh, supports, but no prints. That's because his settings were at like eight seconds. And yeah, he basically cooked the resin at that point. So um, I hate to, I hate the wobble effect. It's a pain to do lithophane picks. 
Absolutely. Especially when you're doing big things like that, you want to have a straight Z. So, so far, this one's got a pretty straight Z. Uh, that's not something I usually see in a budget printer. Sub, sub like $500 resin printers usually, well, except for the Novas. Um, so most of the known ones, the Anycubic, Elegoo Mars, um, the GTEC DP200, that's not really known, but those style printers are usually, they have a Z wobble issue. Um, and yeah, you can swap it out. It's not the end of the world. So uh, cool. Yeah, I'm looking into resin printing right now. You think it's a good printer for a newbie in resin printing. So initially, yes, this is a really, really good printer for the money. Um, I can't really say for certain and give you a definitive answer right now because I usually like to put these things through the ringer uh, for about a week straight. So if you want to wait a week, I know that's a long time because, you know, I'm someone that is impulsive when it comes to buying stuff. And I want something that I know I'm probably going to get for Christmas and I have to hold off buying it. And it's, it's like, like an itch I can't scratch. It's terrible. Um, so I understand the whole impulse buying thing and you want to get into it. So if you do, Buy it on Amazon, and if anything goes wrong, you can probably return it very easily. So um, if you are looking to get into resin printing on the cheap side, this is a very good printer so far. Um, again, it is a little bit wonky that there are no test prints on it. I mean, there are, but they're not something that you can just print off. But again, it's not the end of the world. You can, I'd rather, I'd rather somebody buy a printer put a file that they want to print on it and go from there um, and do that and learn what they need to do to print it. So that would be nice, but yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead and purchase it. Um, I will leave a link down. It'll be an affiliate link to purchase this printer uh, off Amazon. So if you want to wait until this video is over and uh, I get it all set up in the, uh, the description, cause I don't think I can edit the description. Uh, maybe I can. Let's see. Let's see if I can. Uh, and more or less what it is is just uh, an affiliate link is if we, if you happen to purchase the printer, um, then I get a little bit of kickback. It's not much usually. Like take, for example, I had someone buy not someone, but a couple people buy the Anycubic Mono X. And those things were like $800 when they first dropped. I think I got $50 off of those three sales. Yeah, that's a good amount, but I mean, it, it wasn't too much. And then the downside is with Amazon affiliate links, if you just go ahead and you click around there, it takes away money. So it's kind of like you got to make sure that if you're buying something, you got to focus that on that and things like that. So, okay. I have patient and I can wait a week. Cool. Yeah. So, um, if, if you are looking into resin printing, and again, you do have that itchy trigger finger, there are some other videos that I have on my, my channel here that, um, you know, have some other printers that might be a buy right now for you. So, um, again, we, we are still testing a lot of different printers and making sure that they are truly good for you. Um, that's one of the things that I strive to make sure that I tell everybody about is that um, I let you know what's good and bad about it. So um, I, I don't usually hold anything back. I don't care if somebody gave me this printer. Um, I paid for it. It, do it doesn't matter what's going down with it. Um, I always tell the person if they're going to send me something. I'm going to tell these people exactly my thoughts on it, whether it's good or bad. And I will tell you guys exactly how it's going. Um, you know, if, if they have an issue with it or 
something that can possibly be corrected for, you know, me finding that out. And by the time you guys get to purchasing that unit, you know, there might be a fix for it or something like that, you know, but for the most part, resin printing is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's not as tedious or uh, problematic as FDM printing, which these are FDM printers. They use a, a spool of plastic and they, they basically turn it down and melt it into plastic, whereas this is liquid. So the trade-off is you trade problematic for messy. So choose wisely. Me personally, for what I do, I need finished products right off the bat. So I choose resin printing. Um, and with the way that resin printing is going right now, um, they're starting to get better and better and bigger and bigger, and cheaper and cheaper. Um, and on top of it, the resin is also getting much cheaper and it's also getting much more um, rigid, as they say, they call it. Um, basically, it's going to be more, uh, have more ability to hold up with things, uh, stand the strength tests and things like that. So we do have some resin that's just out of the screenshot right above here um, that, you know, is some really, really insane resin that we did a, a test and review on the channel here. Uh, some 3D RS, um, and they're, they're semi-local to me, so that's even cooler uh, that I get to support a local company. Um, they are a little bit more on the expensive side where, you know, a bottle of this might cost you, you know, 15 bucks to $20, um, and theirs might cost you 25 to 30 so it might almost double the price, but the resin that you're getting, A, it's locally made, so that's why you're paying for it, paying for labor and everything like that. And then on top of it, you're paying for a little bit better resin, in my opinion. So whereas most of the Chinese resins has a lot of stuff, a lot of additive, additive chemicals into it. Not saying that's a bad thing. It's just they do that just because they're shipping between different areas of the world and stuff like that. So they got to maintain their viscosity um, and their ability to print. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um but yeah, there's there's some insane resins out there. So yeah, we're we're gonna let this roll. Uh, right now it's it's two thirty seven a.m. I'm gonna let this roll to two forty five. Um, I'm gonna talk your guys' ears off, and uh, we're gonna stop this and see how it looks. And hopefully, it's printing something. It should because we were even too close to the um, to the build plate, but. With that being said, we might have been too close to the build plate and now it's not going to be happening a print because we were too close. Might have squished the print too much. But we'll see. I'd like to see how this build plate drips too because the way that it's beveled on each side, that's a new thing that any cubic has been doing. And I was just kind of weirded out by that when I first saw it, but I, I get where they're coming from and the way that they're using that. So that's, um, that's something interesting to see. Nothing will ever compete with the build plate that I have on my Wii box, though. Um, that thing is really, really nice because there's very little resin left on the build plate once you're done printing. Now, I still drip it off, but it's more or less like, you know, driplets of resin that are left on the print itself. Whereas this, you know, you're, you're usually dripping off the build plates, the, the print as well, and there's usually a good amount on it. But again, with this design, um, it might be a little bit, a uh, little bit better. So we'll have to see. Um, what else? What else? Let's see what's going on here. So yeah, um, for you guys that are joining, like I said, this is a Flash Forge company. This is their sub company called Voxel Lab. Um, and it looks like they are making resin and resin printers for cheap. Uh, speaking of that, let's take a look and see how much these bottles of resin are going for. Uh, so 
But right now, a bottle of white, these are 500 milliliters. They're going for $20 a bottle. And that's pretty much straight up. Um, and again, these aren't anything um, that I've seen before. Um, so I don't think, they're not using the normal resin that everybody else uses, EPAX, uh, Elegoo, and any cubic. They had pretty much all used the same type of resin. Um, these are definitely quite, quite different. Oh, and you know what? This is actually water washable. Are these water washable? I don't think so. I hope not. Because I don't have water washable set up stuff. No, so these are just standard photopolymer. Okay, good. Yeah, not washable. Okay. Yeah, good. Okay, so their water washable is about $20. Let's go and look at their standard resin, if they have it on here. Okay, so their... Their standard photopolymer resin is about 18 bucks. So that's not bad. Oh, actually, it's even cheaper than that. So that's that's for their transparent, which is actually their most expensive. For their gray, it's only 16 bucks. So for 16 bucks, you know, you can you can print a good amount of uh, of statues and things like that. So morning here in the UK, yeah. Yeah, you guys should be like, let's see, it's usually like 6 o'clock when it's 12 here, so you guys should be like 9 or 10 o'clock there. So, but thanks for stopping by, bud. Hopefully you kind of enjoyed the video. You know, I'm just kind of sitting here ranting and raving. So, um, yeah, let's go over some of the stuff. So it is equipped with a 6-inch 2K HD LCD monochrome screen, uh, 2560 by 1620. And the resolution is 50 UM. Uh, so that is very, very good printing accuracy. Um, that's pretty much all it says there. Uh, 405 Newton meter resin, 50 UM. Uh, linear rail ensures the access to move steadily. Um, and yeah, this is a large uh, linear rail. So that is definitely a good thing because that'll keep that very very stable so i like that a lot um my my nicer printers like my nova nova 3d they come with nice chunky um linear rails so maybe the new ones come with this like that so um says large print volume but i mean for a um a newer monochrome printer that's pretty standard. Um, it's nothing spectacular. Uh, now, one interesting thing that I see here that I don't usually see on monochrome screens is it says that the layer thickness can be printed from 0 0.025 to 0 0.1. Now, anybody who's anybody knows that usually monochrome screens have one downside. You trade the speed of the monochrome screen for accuracy. Um, and this is, I think, mostly to do with the RGB elimination because that's what monochrome screen is, black and white. Um, so there's not enough colors transferring over in a specific amount of time. So to try and print at a finer detail, usually 0 0.3 is like, your absolute maximum that you can go. Um, but supposedly this one can go down to 0 0.025. So that's, that might be attainable. Usually it's 0.1 that they can't go down to. But like on the normal one, if I look that up, I can probably see um, that it can go down to 0.1. Let's do a verification on that so I'm not just spilling information out. Let's see what this says. It probably just copies the details on it. Yeah, so pretty much it's the same type of detail. So I don't think they truly tested that. I could be wrong, but I'm just I'm throwing that out there that most likely that was not tested out. That's a pretty bold statement.
Yeah, I think I just copied and pasted everything on here. Pretty much. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we'll we'll just go with that. So. All right, so we're getting pretty much right on par. I said I'd stop at 15. We're close. We're at 245 right now, so we're going to go ahead and stop this print. Not stop it, but we're going to pause it. Let's see how it looks. We get to see how this trips off, too. So the drip feature is eh, okay. That's not good. Why is it doing that? It's dripping all over the front. There's like a suction. That's interesting. Well, I don't know if it's a static thing or if it's a suction thing from the fan. Or lack thereof a fan. Which I'm not digging that. I don't like that at all. So the print is coming out. We're looking good. Uh, I'm not digging that build plate in the way that it attaches to the uh, the hood. Uh, I mean, it's not the end of the world. The hood's just kind of there to protect it. It's not really made to be a visualization type thing. But I know a lot of people have, um, you know, a problem in regards to cleanly cleanliness. Uh, in the way that their printers look. So um, so that's definitely one downfall, I would say, so far, is that it, for some reason it attaches to that. And again, I don't know if it's a static electricity type thing or if it's, you know, a, a fan issue. So that's one thing to look into if we're looking at this. We're going to test the theory here. We're going to see if it's suction or if it's, um, God, I'm losing my thought, my train of thought here. Um, suction or static charge? I think it's static charge. Or a uh, uh, suction, I mean. I think the issue is, is there's no airflow in here, which that's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing because there's nothing being filtered out of this. So all of that, that drippage is going, going to continue to happen because there's nothing in there. So a remedy for this might be ending up drilling a hole in it in the back somewhere, somewhere away from the back. So that way there's some suction coming through here because this is creating a kind of like a hyper hyperbaric chamber type thing where there's there's no air inside of here again that's not a terrible thing because your smell for printing which i don't smell anything right now so this this resin is already low odor um that i can tell but here we'll uh We'll pause this one more time.
and we'll see if it's a suction thing. It's a static thing. Yep. So it's not a suction, it's static. It's probably a common issue that I don't really look at too often, to be honest, um, because I just uh, let them print. Now, with that being said, that brings up a good point because um, at when I was testing out the um, Sane Smart Kumitsu KL9, I had a lot of issues where stuff was getting onto the glass. And I was like, what's going on here? Why do I have stuff on the glass? I lowered my speed, same thing. And I'm like, why is this happening? That might be why, because I never really looked at that. I usually just set the print and, and go. So um, with that being said, this is a good opportunity to make a, a good tip video on uh, preventing splashing on your, uh, on the inside of your, your hood. Um, because, you know, with a little bit of static guard or something like that, um, you might be able to prevent having resin stick to your hood. Um, and this is, this is mostly due because the, Build plate is too close to the front of the um, the hood, so it's kind of good that you guys are seeing this firsthand, and I'm I kind of telling you guys exactly what's going on because you know we determined right away that it's not a suction thing. How did we determine that it's not a suction thing? Well, I pulled up the vat or the the hood while the vat was raising, and it was still pulling at the front of the uh, the hood here. So, yeah, that's kind of an interesting thing. I never would have thought about that. I never in my life would have thought, hey, this is what's going on. So, yeah. So other than that, guys, um, so far, initial impressions, not a bad printer. Um, it does have some downsides, which, you know, I, I said, no pre, pre-sliced um, test files. Again, it's not the end of the world because it actually makes you install sheet to box and set up your print so that's kind of cool that they force you to do that in a way but on the other hand yeah i really wish that they had some um kudos for them on providing a actual you know scraper spatula um this spatula is very very interesting because like i said it's got some grooves on the end there still has got a groove back um and it does have flash forge because you know this is a flash forge company so this, this might actually come in handy. I, I think I might like that one. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, price is amazingly good. Uh, so if you guys are interested in getting into resin printing and you want a fast resin printer, go ahead and take a look at this thing. It's, it's a pretty good deal so far. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. Uh, the whole design and everything looks really, really nice. Um, it does have some, you know, ergonomic flow to it. Um, and, you know, another downside is the, uh, the hood is a little too close to the, uh, the front of the build plate. So the, um, the resin kind of drips onto the, um, the hood. So not a huge issue. You can just get some static guard and spray the hood and that should do. So, um. But yeah, other than that, I hope you guys enjoy the video uh, and me ranting and raving on for, you know, an hour and a half almost. And uh, if you guys do like this printer, I do have an affiliate link below in the description now. So you can go ahead and purchase that. We will come back around in about a week time and, um, you know, give you guys a full on review of how it printed, how it is printing, if there's any issues with it, what have you. Um, and just kind of point those out. But uh, right off the bat, there's, you know, some small issues. It's not a game changer in any way, shape, or form. 
But um, yeah, other than that, um, that's pretty much all I got for now. Till next time, guys. Happy printing.